during this uh, wonderful uh, Georgian meeting for an endoscopy. I really thankful to Professor Mamuka for giving this uh, great opportunity. Uh, this is my first time to visit Georgia, but I already enjoyed the great culture and the great hospitality of Georgia. Well, I'd like to talk about uh, ESD technique uh, for removing challenging colorectal regions today. Uh, this is my COI to disclose. I have been working together with Olympus, uh, Boston Scientific, Top, and Fuji to develop many devices uh, for doing ESD and some other endoscopic resections. Well, uh, ESD is a very unique technique, uh, which is consisted of a submucosal injection to lift up the target lesion and mucosal incision to separate the, uh, the target lesion from surrounding tissue and submucosal dissection to detach the uh, main component from the uh, muscle layer and finally we can remove entire lesion in an unblocked fashion even though the target lesion uh, is really uh, large and difficult. However, uh, still there are some difficult situations for ESD, uh, sometimes caused by the difficulty of controlling endoscope and sometimes caused by the nature of the lesion itself. Well, uh, basically, if the uh, control of the endoscope are uh, really poor, we cannot do anything for the patient. Uh, which is usually caused by long and strongly uh, inflectional structure of colon or uh, adhesion caused by previous abdominal surgery or endometriosis. Uh, previously, we couldn't do anything for uh, the patient in case of having this kind of situation. Uh, then uh, we should, uh, uh, we had uh, send our patient to surgery but now we can uh, have some solution. Uh, Balloon-assisted endoscope system uh, is one of the options. Currently, uh, Fuji has double balloon overtube system, and Olympus have single balloon overtube system, which uh, we can get smooth maneuverability even for the difficult cases. I would like to show you some of the example. Uh, this is a relatively large uh, colonic laterally spreading tumor, which was located at the middle of transverse column. I could uh, uh, go to very close to the uh, big lesion at the middle of the transverse column, but unfortunately, because of the severe adhesion, I couldn't go behind the lesion. That means I couldn't approach to the target lesion uh, for doing ESD. Uh, therefore, we decided to use uh, double balloon overtube system uh, to access to the difficult area. Fortunately, uh, Fuji already developed uh, the, this uh, short lens double balloon system, which we can uh, uh, use it for colorectal ESD procedure. And by using this Fuji uh, double balloon system, I could easily go behind the target lesion. As a result of having smooth maneuverability by using a uh, Fuji double balloon system, I could conduct ESD very smoothly, even with very difficult situation. And finally, uh, we achieved the curative uh, resection and avoided unnecessary surgery for this patient. Well, uh, another difficult situation is caused by nature of the lesions. Uh, sometimes uh, a lesion is getting really big, uh, such as more than 10 centimeter lesion. Usually, uh, the, those are very difficult situation to do endoscopic resection. And sometimes those kind of big lesions are crossing a house hold or crossing the uh, flexure, uh, hepatic flexor or uh, splenic flexor, 
and also sometimes invading to the uh, Bauhens valve or anal canal. All these are very difficult situations to do endoscopic resection. But I believe that most difficult situation is severe fibrosis. Uh, usually, uh, we can uh, use gravity effect to, to open the sudden causal space when we conduct the e ESD in the colon. We can change the patient position again and again to uh, utilize the gravity effect. As a result of the gravity, we can easily open the sudden causal space. As a result, uh, we can visualize the nice subcausal dissection plane and we can safely conduct subcausal dissection under uh, direct vision. And of course, a uh, viscous agent, which can uh, stay a little bit longer, can create nice subcausal fluid cushion uh, to do ESD. Currently, we uh, are using a uh, sodium hyaluronate solution in case of having difficult uh, situation. And there are some uh, other commercially available injection material uh, within European countries or uh, outside uh, European countries. And this is the biggest region which I ever resected from the human body. It was uh, more than 25 centimeter sized region, which was much bigger than our face. Of course, it took uh, nearly seven hours to complete uh, this procedure, but it was possible to remove entire region in an unbroke fashion. And fortunately, this was just a mucosal cancer and uh, there was no lymphovascular infiltration. Uh, therefore, we avoided unnecessary uh, surgery in this case. I did this procedure during end crab node in Hamburg. Probably Professor Zibat was also attending that uh, live demonstration meeting, and it was really uh, impressive uh, experience for me to, uh, to do such a big uh, resection uh, for the human body. Well, uh, as I mentioned, uh, severe fibrosis is the most challenging uh, situation to do uh, endoscopic resection, sometimes caused by previous endoscopic treatment, uh, sometimes caused by muscle traction, uh, which was uh, developed by the uh, movement of big polypoid lesion, and sometimes caused the uh, surgical staple uh, due to previous surgical treatment. All these uh, kind of situation are very, very difficult uh, condition to do uh, ESD. Uh, this is such a case. As you can see here, the, there is a really big protrusion uh, which was located at the lower lectum. And the lesion itself was very big, uh, extending more than two sides of the circumference. And because of the big polypoid uh, protrusion, uh, it caused uh, really uh, severe fibrosis. So in case of having severe fibrosis or muscle traction, we should cut through the muscle itself. Uh, it is quite challenging, but still it's possible, uh, especially for the big lesion which is located at the lower lectum. Uh, in order to spare the inner function, we should do the uh, aggressive endoscopic resection uh, for, for this kind of cases. And uh, another uh, difficult situation is severe bleeding during the uh, long-lasting ESD procedure. But for most of the minor bleeding, uh, we can easily stop it by applying closed tip of dual knife. Uh, dual, by the way, uh, dual knife is my original uh, device, which was developed together with Olympus. Uh, we can use it for uh, uh, making uh, marking. Uh, we can use it for mucosal incision and submucosal dissection. And we can use it for hemostasis. Uh, this is kind of a uh, multifunctional device and very convenient for doing a colorectal ESD procedure. And as I mentioned, uh, we can easily stop the minor bleeding by using cross tip of the knife, uh, by using a spray coag 1.2. Uh, probably I will be able uh, to show you the actual procedure during live de demonstration today. 
And for major bleeding, uh, which are uh, coming from artery, we usually use coagulant spa to stop the bleeding. And soft coagulation is uh, very effective to stop the uh, bleeding uh, without any uh, severe uh, uh, tissue damage. And in case of find, finding sick blood vessel, still we can uh, control the uh, uh, vessel by using open tip of dual knife, by using very low setting of forced coag, which is 0 0.3. Well, I would like to show you actual ESD procedure on this case. As I mentioned, there was a really big protrusion, and uh, it was extending very close to the anal canal. Initially, I started my procedure from the oral side in a little flex position, because we can keep more stable condition by keeping little flex position and start, started um, causal incision from the oral side. I injected glycerol solution to the sudden causal layer. Uh, glycerol solution is a very unique solution, which is consisted of 10% glycerin, 5% fructose, and 0.9% sodium chloride, uh, which was originally developed for the treatment of brain edema in case of cerebral infarction. But the, because of the uh, higher osmolarity, it can stay a little bit longer within the submucosa space. That's why we usually use uh, glycerol solution for most of the standard ESD procedure. And fortunately, that solution is quite cheap. Now I'm injecting solutions through the knife. This device has injection capability. Uh, therefore, we can inject additional so solution at any time. And for the tiny blood vessel, we can easily cut through there by using swift coag. It doesn't cause any bleeding if we, we uh, dissect there uh, very slowly. But in case of finding sick blood vessel like this, we should avoid cutting there because it will cause really uh, severe bleeding. Therefore, I usually dissect surrounding tissue without touching the main trunk of very sick blood vessel. Now you can see the very sick blood vessel here. In this particular case, as I mentioned, I usually use open tip of dual knife and use the very low setting of forced coag. Uh, touch to the uh, sick blood vessel uh, from both sides and uh, give the uh, somehow uh, control to the uh, blood vessel, then we can easily uh, cut through there without having any active bleeding. In order to make sure the safety, I coagulated the exposed blood vessel using closed tip of the knife. This is very uh, useful uh, technique uh, when we conduct uh, uh, colorectal ESD procedure. Now I'm uh, conducting mucosal incision from the anal side in a straight position. Again, I injected a large amount of solution to the submucosal layer to lift up the target lesion from the muscle layer. And carefully made an initial mucosal incision using dry cut, then quickly start the submucosal dissection using swift coag. Usually, swift coag is very powerful, uh, which we can uh, coagulate the blood vessel. Therefore, uh, it usually doesn't cause uh, any uh, bleeding during submucosal dissection if, if we dissect uh, submucosal tissue very carefully. Now I'm extending mucosal incision to the lateral side, uh, carefully uh, making a mucosal incision, then quickly uh, start the submucosal dissection by tracing the inner edge of the incised area using swift coagulation of BIOS uh, 3. Uh, with under uh, direct vision, uh, I can control the uh, dissection relatively smoothly uh, in a safe manner. Now you can see the muscle layer on the, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> What should I do? Thank you. So you can see the muscle layer on the uh, light side and dissected the uh, lesion 
coming down according to the gravity. Now, uh, uh, nearly 70% of the sudden goes array are already dissected, but now uh, we found the uh, mass traction uh, sign here. Uh, we couldn't recognize the uh, uh, light dissection plane because uh, it was com completely fused with the mass layer. Uh, there was no submucosa tissue remaining. Uh, that's why I decided to cut through the mass layer itself. And uh, injecting additional solution uh, on the both lateral side, I could recognize the uh, uh, through dissection plane, light dissection plane, uh, then connect the dissection plane uh, cutting through the mass layer. Of course, the, there was a thick blood vessel within the uh, mass layer, therefore, I encountered the severe bleeding. Therefore, I uh, used the coagulation forceps to stop the bleeding. Uh, it was quite effective, although a uh, little bit uh, challenging situation uh, because of the poor visibi uh, visibility of the operating field. After completing hemostasis, I continued uh, the uh, muscle dissection uh, under the direct vision. Uh, uh, coronic wall is located on the right side and dissected area coming down to the left side. Again, I, I encountered uh, severe bleeding, therefore I applied uh, coagulation forceps to the bleeding point and carefully checked the bleeding point by using the uh, water irrigation, then applied soft coagulation to stop bleeding. Uh, it was a little bit severe bleeding, but uh, fortunately it was successfully uh, stopped. Uh, by using coagulus bar, which was uh, developed by Olympus. Uh, then uh, quickly uh, started the dissection again. Uh, it was a really tough situation uh, because of the severe fibrosis, but fortunately I could manage it uh, by connecting both sides, cutting through the uh, fibrotic area, carefree, step by step. And finally, I uh, could uh, cut through the really fibrotic uh, tissue, and uh, this is the final step, and target region was completely removed. Although it was really big lesion, extending more than two-thirds of the circumference, but it was completely uh, 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 removed in an unbroke fashion. And there was no uh, severe damage to the resection bed, and this was the resected specimen. And fortunately, uh, this was just a mucosal cancer, although uh, the lesion size was more than 10 centimeter, and we achieved the curative resection and avoided unnecessary surgery. And the clinical cost after extensive resection was quite good. This patient didn't complain anything about defecation and didn't uh, complain uh, any pain at all. And uh, it was completely healed. Well, uh, there are some other uh, countermeasures uh, to overcome difficult situation. Uh, there are many traction devices commercially available uh, for ESD technique now. By opening submucosal space using traction device, uh, following submucosal dissection usually becomes much safer and easier. But bringing uh, traction device to the target point is sometimes time consuming and uh, cost for the traction device is also uh, a problem for the patient. Uh, therefore, uh, we developed another uh, uh, technique to overcome difficult sit uh, situation. Uh, this pocket creation method was developed by uh, Jichi uh, Medical School Group, which was uh, organized by Professor Yamamoto, uh, who is a famous uh, endoscopist de who developed double balloon endoscopy and developed the uh, hyaluronic acid uh, to use it for ESD procedure. In this technique, uh, we usually make a small, only small mucosal incision at the anal side of the big target region. 
then quickly make a sub causal pocket and go into the sub causal space and conduct sub causal dissection as far as possible. Uh, because uh, uh, endoscope tip is uh, staying within the small pocket, uh, the movement becomes very stable. Uh, that's why we can uh, conduct sub causal dissection relatively easy and relatively safe. And after completing sub causal dissection, we can make a circumferential mucosal incision uh, on the surrounding tissue, then uh, remove it in an unblocked fashion. Uh, this is really wonderful technique. Uh, but we ourselves uh, developed another uh, technique, which is the water pressure method. By using the active pressure of normal cell line, uh, we can easily open the submucosal space. Uh, probably I can show you this technique during uh, my, de demonst my live demonstration today. Uh, by giving active pressure to the inside the area, I, I can easily open the submucosal space. Uh, we don't need uh, any uh, traction device uh, to open the submucosal layer. Uh, by using the water pressure method, we can do really aggressive endoscopic resection. Uh, this is such a case. Uh, this was not a big lesion, but uh, there was multiple small diverticula uh, within the uh, uh, laterally spreading tumor. Uh, therefore, it is really challenging situation. Uh, I carefully conduct the sub causal dissection and expose the, uh, uh, the tumor tissue going into the diverticula and the carefully dissected the surrounding tissue around the diverticula and finally I removed the uh, entire lesion. Of course, uh, some of the uh, lateral margin becomes uh, margin uh, unclear uh, for the adenomas uh, component, but the cancerous component was completely removed with free of margin. Uh, therefore, uh, I believe that this was curative resection. And another challenging situation is again uh, severe muscle traction sign. Uh, you, as you can see here, uh, this is a big uh, polypoid lesion uh, occupying the uh, entire lumen of the uh, sigmoid column. And uh, as you can see here, the, there was a, a severe muscle traction sign. Therefore, we imagine that this was uh, already became invasive cancer, but unfortunately, uh, taken biopsy couldn't prove the cancer uh, cell itself. Uh, therefore, this patient re refused the surgery. That's why our surgical colleague asked me to do uh, endoscopic resection, uh, partially as diagnostic purposes. Well, uh, uh, we conducted the ESD by using the water pressure method. The big polypoid region was completely occupying the entire lumen, but by using uh, SD food, which has a tapered tip, uh, I could go uh, behind the lesion and injected the relatively large amounts of solution to the submucosal layer and carefully uh, made a mucosal incision and submucosal dissection. Now you can see the muscle layer on the right side, and I usually use a blue uh, colored solution uh, to visualize the submucosal layer. Now you can see the uh, muscle tracted area at the central part, and carefully I dissected this uh, muscle tracted area under direct vision. Uh, of course, it's a quite challenging situation uh, to cut the muscle layer itself, but by uh, cutting through there, uh, I could separate the uh, target lesion from the coronic wall. Uh, this is the last part of the uh, muscle dissection, and after cutting through the muscle layer, it was completely separated uh, from the coronic wall. Then following the uh, procedure becomes quite easy, just making a circumferential mucosal uh, incision as usual uh, using dry cut mode. And 
uh, dissected the remaining submucosal tissue. Now you can see the nice uh, lifted up, uh, very soft submucosal tissue. And this is the final touch to give. And uh, this region was completely removed in an unbroke fashion, even though there was severe muscle attraction sign. And the final result was actually uh, invasive cancer, and uh, there was lymph vascular infiltration. Uh, therefore, uh, this patient finally accepted uh, to go to surgery. Well, uh, this is another example of difficult situation. Uh, this is a young patient who, who was suffering from familiar adenomatous pulposis, and he already underwent uh, total colectomy with ideal pouch uh, reconstruction. Now you can see the uh, suture line here, but unfortunately, this patient developed another uh, flat lesion exactly on the anastomosis side. It's really challenging situation. Of course, uh, this pa patient uh, recommended surgery by the previous doctor, but he refused uh, surgery uh, because it's quite invasive and it uh, will require colostomy. Uh, that's why this patient came to our unit. And we decided to do ESD. And of course, there was lots of surgical staples uh, under the lesion. Uh, therefore, I removed multiple surgical staples one by one, and finally achieved a complete resection of this tumor. Uh, fortunately, this was just uh, benign adenoma. Uh, therefore, we achieved the curative resection. Well, uh, this is my conclusions, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we should select the uh, light uh, treatment option uh, by check checking the target lesion very carefully uh, beforehand. And I, I believe that ESD is the most reliable endoscopic resection technique even for large and difficult lesions. And additional uh, tricks such as the water pressure method or pocket creation method are very helpful to overcome uh, difficult situations. Thank you very much for your kind attention.